this gentleman's anuric with a bilateral hydronephrosis and obstruction um, due to a mass down in the bladder. We're not quite sure what the underlying pathology is. So what we're going to do today is bilateral nephrostomies and attempt anti-grade ureteric stents to bypass the obstruction. So we're just going to look with ultrasound first, looking at the left kidney. And uh, we've got a moderate hydronephrosis. So I'm just going to pick the calyx, which is most convenient and closest to the skin. We're just moving this drape a little bit. And it's sometimes an upper pole calyx, sometimes interpolar, sometimes lower pole. I'm pressing with my finger there, so we're probably going to go for the calyx that's just second from the bottom. So I'm going to put some local anaesthetic in now. This is lidocaine mixed with a little bit of bicarbonate to neutralise the acidity. So this might sting a little bit, sharp scratch, and a little bit of a sting. Is that okay? Yeah. Good. Now we're just going to swap that for a spinal needle so we can go down to the kidney with the anaesthetic. So it's going to anaesthetise right the way down to that renal capsule there. We've got lots of anaesthetic in there. Okay, we're just going to make a little nick on the skin. Does that feel sharp now? No. Okay. Now we're going to use this 18 gauge needle. Uh, it has a diamond shaped tip, it's a non-cutting needle. It's relatively rigid, it has an echo tip. And because it's 18 gauge and it's fairly rigid, it will go where I direct it, rather than using a very fine needle, which tend to bend all over the place. So, a bit of pressure again. Just stop breathing for me there now. Yeah, so we're just into the edge of that calyx. We've got some urine coming out there. So the first thing we need to do is decompress the system. So we have an empty 20 mil syringe. We're just going to aspirate. Sometimes we just need to pull back slightly and we'll pop some neat contrast in. I use neat contrast because the system is already dilated and it's going to dilute the contrast as soon as I inject it. So I want to put the minimum amount of contrast in here. So we'll just screen the needle tip there. I'm just going to move that slightly. Open top to bottom, please. Open a little bit more top to bottom, thank you. Just going to put a small amount of contrast in here. And we're not quite in the tip of that calyx. I think we might need to reposition this needle slightly. Just stop breathing for me there now. Breathe gently. There we go, right in the tip of that calyx. Contrast going freely down the collecting system, so our wire should go very easily now. And just centre lower down. So this hydrophilic wire now is going down the ureter, it's just straightened the ureter out, and we're going to take it right the way down and try and get down to the bladder there. So stop there, just open fully top to bottom please. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take our needle out, and we're going to pop an angle catheter on. So it's a short angle catheter, this is a Vector 2 or Vanchi 2, very, very similar to a biliary minute, but slightly longer. And this will hopefully give us a little bit of angle to get past any distal ureteric occlusion if we can. Right, let's have the uh, talk device back on, please. Thank you. So I think we've just got through into the bladder there. You'll feel that. So that was a little bit of forward pressure with the hydrophilic wire down at the level of the occlusion. And we're now just going to advance the catheter into the bladder. Okay, open side to side of it, wire out, and we'll put a bit of contrast in. So now we're just going to put a little bit of x-ray dye, a bit of contrast, and show that we're in the bladder. 
So we now just change for an extra stiff wire, which we're going to pass down into the bladder to enable us to put a peel away sheath in, followed by a stent. Okay, take that off. Now I'm using a nine French peel away sheath. I could equally use a vascular sheath. The advantage of this, I can peel it away around any nephrostomy I'll leave in. Bit of pushing at the top. Right, so that's the peel away sheath down. Okay, so this is a double J, double pigtail stent. Uh, we're just going to take that off there, take the straightener off. I'm going to leave the thread on the end, which will allow me to pull the stent back if I advance it too far. And we've got a pusher here with a radio opaque marker on it, um, which we can see when we put that through the peel away sheet. So first thing we need to do is just take the inner bit out of the peel away sheet. We'll have some leakage there. If you can just take that off there, please, Joe. Thank you. We're now going to feed the stent onto the wire. I'm just going to push this down into your bladder and that horrible feeling will go away in a moment or two, I hope. I'm just going to pull the peel away sheath back into the collecting system. You can see it just inside the calyx. I'm now going to pull my wire back to allow the stent to coil and I'm going to push with the pusher and it'll coil the stent up at the top. I can leave the wire in if I like for the nephrostomy even though I've got a peel away sheet in. I'm now going to cut the threads on the stent. It's important you do that before you put the nephrostomy in otherwise the threads will entangle in the nephrostomy and you won't be able to remove it. So you need to find the end that's got the knot on it and make sure you pull with that end. And that pulls the thread out and the stent is still in situ. We're now going to just put the nephrostomy on over the guide wire through the peel away sheath. The nephrostomy is being left in purely as a safety mechanism in case the stent doesn't do what we're hoping it does and this can be removed in a, in a day or so. That's going to leave the nephrostomy coiled at the top there. This is a non-locking nephrostomy. If you leave a locking nephrostomy in or a locking pigtail it could get caught on your stent when it's removed. Bit of pushing now, we've finished this side pretty much. So I'm just peeling away the peel away sheath. And we're just gonna pop a bung on the nephrostomy because the stent should be doing its job. Right, okay, so we're now going to look at the other side. We could go and work round from the other side, which sometimes is easier. But on this occasion, I'm just going to reach across and work from this side. So we're just going to have a look with the ultrasound again. This will be cold and we've got a reasonably dilated collecting system and again we're going to probably go for that second lowest calyx. I'd say this side's more dilated than the left hand side. We could just lift the intensifier actually, let's just get that out of the way for the moment. So a sharp scratch coming up with the anaesthetic now. Bit of a sting. Now going to use our spinal needle again to go down to the renal surface. This means we anaesthetise the tract all the way down to the kidney and we can see on ultrasound exactly where we're going with the anaesthetic. You can see the needle going down to the renal cortex there. Now we're going to take the same 18 gauge needle. Just pop it through the skin there. Pushing again. Just, just withdrawn that slightly, we've just gone a little bit deeper than we wanted to. And we're back into the collecting system now. 
So now we're going to connect our contrast up, having decompressed the system. And let's have a little look. So we've got a little bit of contrast going to the collecting system, also into branch of renal vein. So we're right on the tip of that calyx. Just going to try with a hydrophilic wire to see if we can get it into the calyx now. We've got urine coming back, so we're, we're kind of half and half. Could I have the torque device, please? Okay. So I think that's gone, you can see that's gone across to the renal vein. If you're in the renal vein, it means you're really absolutely right next to the collecting system, as indeed you can see on the fluoro. We're just gonna pull that needle back slightly, just see if we can get it to just drop down into that collecting system. There we go. So we've just popped through the tip of the calyx, down the dilated ureter. So we're now going to pop a cath angle catheter in there and do exactly the same as we did on the other side. Bit of pushing in your back again. Just going to rotate that catheter as it goes in and yeah that's down the ureter open top to bottom a little bit please we'll take the wire out we'll just confirm we're in the ureter not just dissected alongside it but it did go very very easily we've got urine coming back there as well okay so that's the dilated ureter we're just going to follow that down Right, okay, so I'll take the wire back now, please. And if you could stay coned in top to bottom, please. And if you can centre a bit lower, please. Yeah, okay, thanks. So now just taking that wire down, there's a bit of dilated, tortuous ureter there. The ureter often forms loops when it's very dilated. A bit of pushing now. So my arms are either side of the coned in beam now. It's going to take more wire down around that loop and it's down and actually it's gone straight into the bladder no problem okay it's pushing more wire in and it's straightened out now so we're just going to take the catheter down and we're now going to put in our extra stiff wire so let's keep my arms away from where we're working i'm going to take the wire down we're now going to put our nine french peel away sheath in i'm just going to lift that up a bit a bit of pushing now so i'm keeping my wire tight and the wire has not withdrawn from the bladder as i've advanced the peel away So it's going to let that system decompress through the peel away sheath. We'll put some gauze down there to try and catch some of it. And we'll then pop our stent in. Okay, so it's the same stent again. It's a double pigtail stent, seven French, 26 centimeter. Uh, we're just going to find where the knot is. I'm just going to take that out of the way. So I'm just working either side of the beam again. Let's have the pusher on, please. You can see the stents down to the occlusion now. So it's gonna push that stent through. It's going through very, very easily. Pull the wire back. That's the stent coiled up in the bladder. We're now going to go up to the top end and we're just going to check the top deploy the top end so what I'm going to do now is pull that peel away sheath back you'll see it as it comes back there it is there just coming onto the screen and into the collecting system I'm then going to pull my wire back push forward with the stent pull the wire back there we go stent deployed at the top take that pusher off please Joan now I'm just going to peel the peel away down to the level of the skin. We're going to snap the thread on the stent. We're going to find where the knot is. Pull the side with the knot so we don't catch it in the stent. That's the thread out. Now I'm going to put the nephrostomy on. So this is a seven French nephrostomy. Again, we're going to leave this 
bunged because we don't need to leave it on free drainage. This is purely in case the stents don't work. Frostomy is going in, wire's coming back, that's coiled up. Okay, just gonna lift that away. Now just going to peel this peel away sheath away, keeping the nephrostomy in. There we go, and we're going to pop another bung on this side, and then we're going to suture both nephrostomies in, and they can be removed by traction on the ward once we're happy the stents are working. Okay. If the system was overtly infected, I would probably leave both of these nephrostomies on free drainage. 